Good evening and welcome to News Channel 8. I'm Jerome Aegean and these are some of the top stories we have for you tonight. A blood-filled weekend in the Virgin Islands leaves one man dead and several others injured overall. A young dog is lucky to be alive after being doused with hot oil. We'll tell you how you can help. And a popular St. Kitts school celebrates a milestone in your Caribbean report. These stories and more are up next on News Channel 8. <laughs> Our top story tonight, the last 72 hours for the Virgin Islands has been extremely violent, especially for St. Croix. We start our coverage in Frederickstead, where a 38-year-old man was gunned down in a hail of bullets that cost him his life. News Channel 8's Wes Small has the story. Thanks a lot, Jerome. We're in the Smithfield area where we have sad news to report. It was about 11 o'clock or shortly before 11 o'clock where we have 38-year-old Jeffrey Ramos right behind me in that White House as the cameraman pans. And unfortunately, he was shot multiple times. He was found unresponsive when emergency personnel got to the scene. Right now, let's go to Melody Rames, VIPD spokesperson, with this latest homicide. Police have released the name of the victim in Friday's fatal shooting on St. Croix. He has been identified as 38-year-old Jeffrey Ramos of Estate Two Brothers, Frederickstead. The victim was shot by unknown assailants not far from his home. Officers responded to the call of shots fired, and when they arrived on the scene, they observed the victim on the ground a few feet away from his home. Emergency medical technicians on the scene said the victim showed no signs of life. He was taken to the Governor Juan F. Louis Hospital and Medical Center where he was pronounced dead. Anyone with any information regarding this fatal shooting is asked to call detectives at 712-6077, 712-6037, or you can call Crime Stoppers USBI at 1-800- 222 tips. Thanks a lot, Melody Rames. Right now, police don't know who the suspects are. They don't know who the motive is. Again, if you know anything, you should call 911 or Crime Stoppers at 1 800 222 tips. I can tell you this, as you'll see in my next report, it was a very violent and bloody 72 hours on this island alone. With that, we're in Smithfield, where unfortunately we had another homicide over the weekend. I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. And the violence continues in Christiansted area. News Channel 8's Wes Small has the report of a 24-year-old man who's lucky to be alive. Thank you very much, Jerome. Uh, here we are in Gallows Bay, and it was around 4.15 in the morning where we had a 24-year-old who stopped here to get some food, and he was shot multiple times. He's pretty lucky to be alive. We believe he was hit about seven, eight, possibly nine times, but. It just uh, thankfully, none of those were life-threatening. A 9 millimeter gun was recovered at the scene. Let's go to Melody Rames, VIPD spokesperson. Criminal Investigation Bureau detectives are investigating a non-fatal shooting that occurred in Gallus Bay Christiansted at about 4.15 a.m. on Saturday, October 22nd. The male victim said an unknown person fired shots at him and then ran away. Police were dispatched to investigate shots fired near the parking lot on Lobster Street in Gallus Bay. When they arrived on the scene, they observed an injured male who later told them that he purchased the plate of food and was returning to his vehicle when an unknown person came out from between some vehicles and fired shots at him, striking him in the lower body. The victim said the shooter was wearing a stocking mask over his face, but he had no further description of the shooter. Police recovered a 9mm firearm from the scene and the weapon was turned over to the forensic technicians for testing. Police are asking anyone with any information about this shooting to call detectives at 712-6077, 712-6037, or you can call Crime Stoppers USVI at 1-800-222-TIPS. Thanks a lot, Melody. Now, including the homicide that I did in Smith in in a state Smithfield in Frederickstead just now. That brings our total to 36 murders in the territory. Unofficially, I have to get it from Melody Rames. These numbers change drastically sometimes. 24 murders on St. Croix and 12 on St. Thomas. In the last week or so, this is the statistics for the territory. We've had three people dead 
and countless others wounded. Almost seems like we're in Libya or war-torn Afghanistan. Within the last 72 hours, on the island of St. Croix alone, we have at least three people wounded and one person dead. All right, these statistics, like I said, are unofficial. There's some possibly not reported and what have you. But I have to tell you folks, there's a lot of guns in our territory and it just needs to be addressed. Remember, this is the second shooting over the weekend where a gun was recovered at the scene. Again, we have a 24 year old just stopping to get a plate of food, 4.15 in the morning. This is the spot where he was dropped. The blood is still there. Shot seven, eight, possibly nine times. Lucky to be alive. Meanwhile, that's the situation here in Gallus Bay and the situation in St. Croix and territory wide. It was definitely a bloody week and a bloody weekend as well. I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. And the news does not get any better for our four-legged friends as well. News Channel 8's Wes Small is at the Island Animal Clinic at Five Corners. This is a story that will break your heart. Thank you very much, Jerome. I know that you are a, a pet volunteer from Vista and AmeriCorps. I know that you are definitely a pet lover. This is going to break your heart. We are all here for Kara. I'm here with Miss Julie Elkins. She works at the Carambola Spa, also together with Tamron Reef. We are here at Island Animal Care under Dr. Hess, a fantastic surgeon for vets and so forth. And I'm going to be the one then to at least put a dollar for Kara because, you know, I really agree that dogs are man's best friend, pets are. And I'm here with Julie. It's just a sad situation, but there is some hope thanks to people like you. Thank you, Julie. Thank you for coming out. Uh, we found Kara on 669, which is um, Annalee Farms. She was running down the road. She has been badly burned by oil. And we're just trying to help get care for her as much as possible. Um, any donations can be brought up here to Dr. Hess. And the girls here will take your phone donations. They'll do whatever you know you want. They'll do checks. They've even doing um, tax receipts. I know for some of the people who are needing tax receipts. Um, unfortunately, now Kara is actually a little bit worse than before. She has tetanus now. And she's got an IV in her so but her tail still wags she's seven months old and we're just trying to get the best care and help for her so that we can get her better and adopted out to a very good home right where was Kara found and on 669 yeah. in Annalee Farms, Farms on that road and we're just this is a horrible um, way to treat an animal and we're just trying to any donations that we have left over after Kara we want to keep donating here for other burned dogs that have been burned by other people because unfortunately this is not the first burn case that has came into this office. All right, and here is Kara right now. Hey, y'all are gonna be all right. Look at Kara, and I know it, it looks a little rough uh, for people watching, but you know what, look at that tail moving. Unfortunately, this is not the first time this reporter has been here for an abused animal, and I could remember that the tail was wagging just like that when our camera was here before. That means that these animals know when people are trying to help them. They know the difference between people trying to help them, like us here at Channel 8 and this beautiful woman next to me from Carambola. They know the difference between us and then animals, who I think are the animals, who would do something like that to a pet like this, to a dog like this. I mean, you need some type of psych psychological help. You, I hope that you take counseling. If you know who did this to this beautiful animal in Anley Farms, I urge you to get help. Because if you do this to this animal, there's no telling that you would do to human beings and mankind. It makes the crime to me no less. I think that you need help. I don't hate on you. I feel bad for you. Or anyone that would throw oil, hot oil, or hurt a poor domesticated animal like that, that hasn't done anything to anybody. I feel there's a special place for you, but you need help. You need some type of medical assistance. Now, I'm off my soapbox, and let's find out how we can help Kara um, through Tamron Spa. At and the spa, Tamron Reef, mm -hmm. at the spa, Carambola, you can drop off donations. Um, also, you can call Dr. Hess's office. It's 718-3106. 718 3106. Here he is right here. I'd like to get the good surgeon in. The good doctor in here right now. And hey, Doc. Excuse me. Excuse yeah, excuse pardon. Me. Okay. Doc, I'm happy that, you know, look at that tail wagging. Like yes, that. yes. She's a remarkable dog. And uh, 
with some remarkable people helping her. We uh, hope that there should all be nicely resolution. And um, it's a very sad situation that occurs with these kind of situations in which somebody has just purposely created a very severe injury to this dog. They're and uh, and they, they need help. That's yeah, why I urge right. them to get counseling. Right. I really do. But Doc, thank God that you're a man. You're a good surgeon, and you rise to the occasion for things like well, that. Well, well, I'm I'm just a small part of this. Uh, the ladies that uh, brought her in uh, were the were the the start of the whole situation. I'm just a small little piece of uh, yeah. of the help, but uh, there to be to uh, get all the credit in the world, and uh, we just need to be a bunch of good Samaritans all the time and please man if you know about people abusing any kind of animal or pet like that please please call the st croix animal shelter or even the police department and you know or call dr hess if you don't want the animals anymore man maybe we could get them up for adoption okay please and thank you dr hess man. thank you wes have I, a good day yes sir i appreciate that julie congratulations thank to you. you i i already tried to get it kicked off with a little dollar in the jar there thank people you people come on and come to the you know, Carambola is a beautiful place to go to get everything done for you, and you'll help out Kara. One last shot at Kara before we close. Kara knows we're trying to help her. Look at that. There's on cue, the tail wags. And we're also doing, I started her a Facebook page. It's Help for Kara. And you can go on there and kind of keep up with all the updates. We're going to keep pictures posted and status of yeah. what's going on with her and where all the money is definitely going to. All right, we're right behind Five Corners, Dr. Hess. What's the number one more time, partner? 718-3106. All right. He knows that number well. That's what he calls before he goes to play golf, say he's taking the rest of the day off. I'll get in trouble for that one. Dr. Hess, congratulations, man. Wings waiting for you guys in heaven. Kara, keep your tail wagging, baby. I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. That's right, Wes. Thanks for bringing us that story tonight. And there is no excuse for violence of any kind, whether it's a person or an animal. And the violence continues with, our, with two men who were ambushed in the Catherine's Rest area Saturday night. Both men were shot multiple times. One victim... 25-year-old tried to elude his attackers by driving away. The car crashed some time later. Meanwhile, the other victim ran for help by jumping through a residence window. Both men were taken by ambulance to the Juan Luis Hospital. Call 911 or Crime Stoppers to help put these suspects behind bars. And when we come back from this break, we'll take a look at your Caribbean report. <laughs> And let's take a look at your Caribbean report for tonight. In your Caribbean report tonight, we start in Roadtown Tortola, where Calvin Rabat, 66 years of age, admitted to raping a minor and was this morning, Monday, October 24th, sentenced to eight years in prison for rape and nine months for each count of indecent assault. The sentences are to be run concurrently and was handed down by Justice Indra Charles in high court. The sentence commenced from the day of his incarceration, which was October the 6th of 2011. According to Justice Charles, the whole situation was an unfortunate one as the victim is carrying a baby and will be a mother in two months, psychologically scarred and contemplating running away. On Tuesday, October the 18th, when the sentence was initially scheduled, Rabat collapsed in high court prison dock before he was sentenced. Mr. Rabat recently pled guilty to having sex with a 15-year-old sometime in February of this year and prior to that, fondling her. And turning now to Nassau, the Bahamas, where authorities in the Bahamas moved speedily to ensure that there is no spread of cholera after confirming that one illegal immigrant had the potential deadly infection, Minister of Health Hubert Minus said on Friday. Minus confirmed that the Carmichael Road Detention Center was being sanitized and that some of the immigrants who had been housed at the facility were given medication as a preventative measure. Others were reparated, including the immigrant with a confirmed case of cholera, according to the minister. It was reported yesterday that the detainees at the detention center were relocated to Her Majesty's prison and it is not clear how long they will be there. The immigrant who had cholera was on board a vessel detained by the Royal Bahamas Defense Force in late September. And finally, in St. Kitts, it was the school that would not die, although their school ceased to exist in 1967 when it merged with the grammar school and became Bastier High School, and when the building went up in flames in 1978, yet the school refused to die and lives in the memories of the former pupils. This past weekend, observed the 82nd birthday of the school, and the past pupils of the girls' school met and have been meeting nearly every year on that Sunday nearest to that date at a service and give thanks to the founders and their exemplars.
exemplary education and to pay tribute to the past pupils who have blazed the trail in fulfilling the school's motto, Ready to Serve. This year's worship was held at the Wesley Methodist Church in Bestier and paid special tribute to two school icons, one who'd made history in the annals of the school and was attending the anniversary service, but the other one was handed out posthumously. And that's your Caribbean report. And the governor's reading challenge is completed once again. Let's take a look at some highlights. My name is Michelle Martin. I am the library technician here on the bookmobile today. Um, also one of the retired employee that is volunteering now on the bookmobile. Today, we're here at the governor's challenge reading program. Right now, this is the bookmobile, books on wheels. This is what it looks like inside. Right here we have our handicap ramp, here we have books, also we have a TV here for the kids to watch with DVDs. These are all our books and here we have like oh, over close to 2,000 books for the patron to read. We have adult children books and also here is my bookmobile driver, Mr. Sabrati. Hi, good day. <laughs> um, if, have computers in here. Yes, we have computer access for the kids to use. If uh, anyone is interested in having the bookmobile come to their location, they can call at the P Atalee McFarlane Peterson Library, 772-0315. Also at the Florence Williams Public Library, 773-5715. Either speak to Miss Bow or Mr. Sabrati. A lot of people read books online as well. So we wanted to have not only the traditional books, but the electronic books available. On the library's website, which is Virgin Islands Libraries, publiclibraries.org, we have from kindergarten to fifth grade and from sixth grade through twelfth online free books thanks to the governor's reading challenge sponsoring our subscription i want to applaud the governor's office for this initiative and to let them know that the department of education will continue to be there with them side by side as we want only the best pleasant good afternoon to you all unfortunately the governor couldn't be here with us this afternoon due to conflicting engagements however i'm pleased to be here to this worthwhile event Reading. Reading is fundamental. Does everyone agree with that? Reading is fundamental. And we're honored to be here this afternoon for two reasons. One, because you're here. And two, because all of you have read at least five books this summer. Is that correct? At least five books. Who read more than five? Who read more than 10? Who read more than 15? And again, we want to thank Earl Morris for bringing that footage for us tonight. And when we come back from this break, Ovenza steps up to the plate. Stay with us. And the fine folks at Ovenza made it possible for some lucky students from Elena Christian to receive their steel pan instruments much needed. Let's take a look. Here we have two of the guys from ISU who are doing a painting here for us. I have introduced yourself. Devon Floyd. Devon Floyd and Edward Sardania. Edward Sardania. And you look at all the pans, you see all the pans out here. They've done all of this priming, right? Is this called? Yes. They've done the priming of the pan and then after they do the priming, they're going to do the painting of the inside and the outside of the pan. So how do you feel coming here today? Paint, paint, paint. Whew. How do you feel coming here today? Um, doing this for the students of Elena Christian. Can you tell us? Well, yeah, I would go to help give back to the community. So you see, everybody has the same mentality in giving back to the youth and giving back to the community. I want to show you the final product um, of the work done by Turner of St. Croix and ISU. Um, if you notice, the pans are painted, and we're going from this step to the next step, which is trying to raise funds to purchase stands for the pan. You notice that the pans are here, and then that on stands is because we don't have enough stands for the pan. And hopefully, we're trying to start a rehearsal on Wednesday. We're not sure um, if by some miracle, um, things might fall into place for us that we may get some stands. 